Hello, I want to share something with you, personal. It's not just the only sickness I suffer from, but I definitely suffer from gastroesophageal reflux disease, acid reflux. And I noticed that what triggers me the most is, guess what, is chocolate. So I cannot have regular chocolate whatsoever. Because it triggers me like crazy and I love chocolate, man. So what I was thinking about to get chocolate bar made out of carob. And the only one I could find on the internet, you may point me, of course, I would appreciate it to, if you could point me in direction where I could get an American chocolate in a form of a chocolate bar, not just, you know, chocolate chips or whatever. Not that BS, I don't like it too much, just like chocolate bar. And I had to go to get it, uh, you know, from Amazon and it comes from Australia. So I got the package, I already opened the package. Now, you know, time for the chocolate. It's not really chocolate, it's made of carob, but you know, it looks, there you go. Aussie shark bar almond. So let me read ingredients to you. Let me take my glasses off. Getting old. Australian carob powder. Palm kernel starin. Rainforest Alliance certified. I don't know what that's supposed to mean. Coconut sugar, almonds, sunflower and lecithin. Vanilla flavor, Himalayan pink salt. Himalayan pink salt, you know, it's not my favorite kind of a food, but you know, let's open it. Opens pretty hard and let's taste it a little. Taking one line over here, looks like chocolate. And now, let's see. Yeah, if you taste it carefully, you can say it's probably not chocolate. However, it's pretty close to the chocolate. And it has pleasant flavor, I'm surprised, in a positive way. Texture is pretty good. It's a little crunchy. That's good. Even though it's my pig out date, you know, I'm not gonna eat too much. So let's talk about something else. Let's talk about concepts. Concepts are important, but they can mislead you. Let's talk about World War II. You know, let's taste and talk about history. The problem most people have with use of cavalry by so many sides in World War II not just the Poles, the Germans themselves, to a small extent, the Soviets, the Italians, pretty much the only fully mechanized militaries on earth when it comes to World War II were only, were only the militaries of the United States who up to 1945 kept half a brigade of cavalry in a case they had to fight fight in marshes and great britain they were the only two fully motorized and mechanized you know militaries on earth and still the british used donkeys and horses when it came to the combat in uh, you know in asia when it came to the irregular combat in asia you know partisan guerrilla wolf warfare guerrilla warfare guerrilla warfare so uh, 
you know, uh, insurgent warfare, you can also call it. So, uh, mm, what's the problem? Why can't we, you know, say whether cavalry was good in World War II or a bad idea? Well, it's very simple because we have to differentiate, make a difference. We have to make a difference. We have to differentiate between two concepts, two important concepts. One concept is usefulness. The other one is obsolescence. So was cavalry obsolete by World War II? Of course, it was. Was cavalry useful? Of course, it was. You know, one doesn't preclude the other. If one is no, doesn't mean the other is no. Doesn't work this way. You know, if A is true, doesn't mean B is true or false. It's kind of similar to a knife. Knives became obsolete when we started making swords. That's how it is. However, soldiers even today very often carry, you know, knives into combat with them, even though knives are obsolete. Why? Why do they carry knives with them? Because they can be useful. It's a very important concept, usefulness. And now, you know, part three, the last part, common misconception. Common misconception about intelligence services, such as our CIA, and I, you know, kudos to the people who work for CIA, because they have kept us safe for so many years. You know, we wouldn't be where we are, possibly wouldn't be even alive, if not for CIA. However, the common misconception about intelligence services is that they are law enforcement. They're not law enforcement, my friends. Intelligence, any intelligence agency, primary duty is to steal, steal, steal information from our enemies and even from our friendlies to make certain that they still are friendlies and we can count on them. So, you know, that's a pretty much common misconception. And, uh, you know, cooperate because you know what the lawyer gonna tell you lawyer gonna tell you that you should not talk to the police law enforcement because anything you say gonna be used against you however since cia is not law enforcement do offer them your full cooperation okay since they are not law enforcement they may overlook certain things more easily than law enforcement so make yourself useful and cooperate and make yourself convenient. And unless you have really did something terribly, terribly wrong, you know, you're probably going to be okay. Don't mess with CIA. And, you know, uh, I hear that song that says the blood of the Crips and the KKK. I don't care for either. L my wife's late daughter was... Uh, you know, attacked by gang members twice. Wasn't too bad, but she got punched a few times on each occasion. So I don't care for gangs. Not really, no. And uh, KKK, my wife is black. She's African-American. You know, I don't care for KKK again. To me, KKK is just another freaking gang. That's all it is. That's how I treat it. You know, and uh, now another historical, in my opinion, it's a historical misconception. You know, the South was wrong. Don't get, first of all, the South was wrong. Slavery was wrong. The Southern economy was inefficient. You know, in agriculture, except for cotton, in every single respect, in every single crop, in every single plant that was grown. In every single plant 
you know, south, except for cotton, was behind when it comes to yields, when it comes to how much they were producing per acre, you know, they were behind the north. So even in agriculture, they were behind, not just uh, industrialization. So it had to be reformed. And it was. And yes, the South did preemptively, one may argue, attack Fort Sumter. However, anybody with any brain knew at the time that the war was coming. There was no way the war was not coming. Doesn't matter who started it. So, uh, you know. So what happens? You know, United States used to be a confederation. Then it became a federation. And you can secede from a federation. However, you cannot secede from a federal republic. So what happens? As a result of the civil war at the tips of the bayonets of the, you know, Union soldiers, who are doing the right thing, you know, United States got reformed. It became de facto a federal republic. So it changed its, uh, you know, political status from federation to a federal republic. And by the end of the century, the 19th century, what happens, uh, somebody protested the situation to the Supreme Court and a U.S. Supreme Court rendered decision which affirmed that United States is no more a federation and it's a federal republic and it's illegal to secede. However, there was never act of Congress. So uh, to me, it's uh, wrong. Even though they were wrong, it's still wrong to call the rebels traitors because they weren't betraying anything because within a federation, you can secede. So pretty much that's the fourth part. I said the third part was supposed to be the end. I was mistaken because another idea popped into my funnel and I'm trying to be a useful engine, you know, to uh, to take quote from uh, Thomas the Tank Engine. But anyway, you know, uh, if you enjoyed this video, please uh, click up that you liked it, you know, and subscribe. And, you, and I would love any constructive comments. Comments that are not constructive gonna be removed. I don't care if you agree with me, you don't have to. You know, actually, I don't like for you to agree with me. You know, because uh, I do borrow from Friedrich Nietzsche. And a man should create his own values, should not be a servant to any ideology. So with that, you know, think of your own and be well.